One decision facing the fisher is whether to sell wet or dry product. Dry product fetches a better price, but it requires many additional stages to remove as much moisture as possible from the animal. This means a lot of time and effort. And without a great deal of care, valuable product can go rotten. Here's how Sean McAtamney at ISP in Cairns approaches industrial dry processing. So this is a, a typical shipment from the Torres Straits. Uh, this particular product here has come in from Stephen Island. Each of the tubs are marked, clearly identifying that it's uh, salted sea cucumber product. That's important for the shipments because it helps the uh, freight uh, companies to identify what the product is and what the best way for the product to be transited to the buyers in Cairns or elsewhere. So the product is typically, um, we, we utilise the same uh, tubs as what we use for our fishermen in the, in the, in the dories. So it's a great way to reuse the infrastructure. And uh, so this is fairly typical of, of um, salted product that's come into our depot. As you can see here, the product is, um, is quite dry. There's not a lot of liquid inside the tub. And the most important thing, as, we've, as we talked about during the training and in initial parts, is it's very important in the initial stages of the salting process to use more salt. But after time, that, that seven to 10 day window after the, after the product has been uh, in the, uh, in the uh, salt and in the tubs and the liquid's been drained off con constantly. Uh, it's at that time that, that you know, uh, packers like the guys at Stephen Island have done here, they've emptied the product into another tub. They've used uh, obviously enough salt to make sure that the product during transit is kept uh, in a stable condition and that's enough for it to then travel uh, down, to, uh, down to cans. Um, one thing that does happen out of, uh, for once the product comes in from the outer islands, uh, sea Swift and Toll, or with whoever the carriers are coming out of there, they typically refrigerate the product in chillers, in chilled um, shipping containers, and that also helps to slow down the amount of water that comes out of the product and uh, ensures that we don't have spillage or leakage during transit. Uh, once we receive the product like this, we check, we do certainly do a visual inspection of what the product looks like. We're looking for simple things like odour or a lot of liquid in the tub that might suggest to us that the quality of the product, even before we wash it, might, might not be quite right. Um, odour is a big one with sea cucumber because obviously if it has a rotten smell, then typically it means that the product hasn't been treated well uh, from the dory and during the, salt, the early salting process. From here, we take the tubs and they're put into a washing station where indiv uh, individual staff will actually handle, sort the product by species, uh, wash the excess salt off the outside and then from there it'll then travel through the processing line. Okay, so the second stage to the process, once we've received the, the product in and we've done a visual inspection on the product when it's been received in, in the processing facility, the product is then taken into a washing station similar to this and uh, we fill the tubs with fresh water. And then from there, our processing staff here are sorting the product into the different species uh, and they're checking for um, a range of things. Again, odour is a big one. They're checking that the cut is uh, done correctly on the animal. And, uh, and, they're, and they're also, the major thing that's happening in this process is, is they're washing any excess salt from the animal because it's, it's, it's this product, once it's been uh, washed, that we then weigh and then pay our fishermen on um, in terms of a pay weight. So this is what we talk about, a salted, a salted weight um, delivered to the processor. So with the salt washed off from here, um, once the product is sorted, it will then go from here, providing that, that the processing staff are happy with the quality of the and condition of this product. It will then go to a weigh, to the weighing station to be weighed, so that the weights can be recorded for the for the product by species and uh, and um, and uh, also by the number of pieces. So uh, at our facility here, we actually count the number of pieces into each of the baskets, so that we have an idea of what the average size of the raw material is like so that we can then best mix and match this to our customers' requirements once the product's dried. And it also allows us to check ourselves um, at a weighing level to make sure that the product has been weighed correctly. Okay, so the next stage in the process, once the product has been thoroughly washed and checked for quality uh, uh, defects, the uh, product is brought across to the weighing station. So we're currently weighing uh, redfish here, so all of this product is the same species. Uh, it's being weighed in um, uh, to basically get a, a net weight 
that we will pay uh, the fishing corporation in this example at Stephen Island for the product that they've uh, sent to us. So prior to the product being put on the scales, the tub is teared off so that the, uh, the actual product weight is only the, the, uh, the, the beach demur that's inside the tub. So in this case, there's 30.6 kilos of redfish in this tub. From there, the number of pieces and the, uh, and the net weight for the product will be recorded uh, in a manual way uh, so that later on, um, uh, later on in the process, we'll, we then generate a purchase for that product uh, for this raw material. The next stage of the process uh, for the uh, process in the sea cucumber after we've washed it, grated it, weighed it, is then to start the, the process of cooking the product. Uh, the cooking of the product is very important. Uh, it's an important stage for a few reasons. One is, is that it, it uh, helps to reduce the water from the, from the animal, which, which by extracting that water helps us then during the drying process. But the other really important uh, outcome of cooking is to get the shape of the animal. And shape's very important because it's a it helps with the presentation of the product. Um, in terms of different methods for cooking, uh, an open fire with a 44-gallon drum of water um, is is um, is a is is a way of, of boiling the product. As is uh, electric um, electric cookers or gas cookers. Um, uh, the other way that uh, we handle it in our processing factories in order to put more volume through is we have larger uh, steaming or, or ovens to be able to cook the product in in much larger batches so that we can obviously handle uh, larger volumes. Uh, a traditional prawn cooker or, a, or a, a boiler will look something like this. This one here is an electric cooker, but um, there are various um, other ways, diesel and, and gas-fired cookers with a similar layout such as this, where you have a, uh, a basket in there and you might be cooking a batch of, say, 20 to 30 kilos per cook. Um, the cooking time varies depending on the size of the animal and, and sometimes uh, the species of the animal. So there's no set formula um, to, to, um, to uh, the, the right cooking time for sea cucumber. But generally speak, speaking, a good test of a good cooked sea cucumber is, is whether it bounces like a rubber ball. That's a very crude way to, to, uh, to test whether or not it's been cooked properly. And that, doesn't always, um, that always doesn't prevail with all types of cucumber. Um, in our situation here, we're cooking with a large steaming oven, so we're not actually boiling, we're steaming the product. And uh, we've just finished a batch of about 150 kilos. The product is, is sorted by size and it's important to probably do that if you were cooking in a, in a, uh, a traditional boiler style like this because this, the, 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 the efficiency by which they boil and the, and the, and the quality of the, the outcome from the boiling process um, is best done if the size of the animal is a like size. So put big ones with big ones, small ones with small ones. So we do the same in our oven here. And as you can see um, here, these are redfish that we've just finished cooking, They're quite hot. So you can see the outcome is a, a nice shaped product. It's firm to touch. Uh, the, uh, the product itself um, uh, has a good visual presentation to it in color. And you can see the difference between uh, the product that we started with. So this is a redfish that we've just washed. It hasn't been cooked so far to the first cook that we've done with this product. So there's a lot of shrinkage, but also one significant thing has happened. It's taken shape and uh, it's, it's become a more attractive piece to look at rather than a salted piece like this. So after the product's been cooked, uh, the next stage is obviously uh, to be able to put uh, the product onto some sort of a drying rack or drying system. Uh, in our case, we use open baskets. Uh, the product uh, is, is dried, um, again, keeping the product together, so all the redfish with the redfish, blackfish with the blackfish. What's happening here is, is we're spreading the product uh, belly down uh, and we're rinsing the product because even though it's been cooked and we've washed the salt from the animal during the uh, weighing and, um, and, um, and washing process, uh, there's, the salt continues to come out of the animal and it'll continue to come out for, for many days uh, once it's entered into our drying facility. And uh, so it's important to keep getting the salt to come off the animal. So we're just washing the product here and spreading it out in the baskets. It's important if you're drying sea cucumber, even in, open, open, in the open air, 
that the cucumber isn't touching during the drying process because the contact with skin, the skin to skin contact will cause damage to the product. And it also allows the air to go around the product so you'll get a much more effective drying process. So once the product has been uh, has spread spread out in a drying area, I guess it's important to understand there are a few different ways to dry this product. It can be dried in the open sunlight and open air, um, and that's quite traditional through um, a lot of areas, particularly particularly through the Pacific region. Uh, the product would be boiled, no different than we've shown that been demonstrated downstairs, and then the product would be laid out in open um, uh, breeze breezeways. Um, and direct sunlight and the product would be transferred from that position indoors overnight to stop humidity, rain um, and, and other things predating on the, on the product and, uh, and then move back out into, and into the open air um, the following day and the process start again. There is a certain turning point where the product then needs to be reboiled and that's the same it doesn't matter what type of drying process you, uh, you employ to get the product dried. So sun drying is one method uh, you can use artificial, uh, artificial air, either through heat sources, uh, power or diesel or, or electricity. Um, but um, dry, a dry air is, is, is definitely, uh, will definitely speed up the drying process and ensure that the product doesn't remain in a wet state. One of the dangers of drying out, outdoors is, is obviously you're affected by the elements. And particularly in tropical areas like we live, you, you um, suffer from humidity. And, and the sea cucumber themselves are like a sponge, so even though it might be out in the direct sunlight, later in the afternoon it might become humid because there's a thunderstorm coming in, and the, the, the sea cucumber will suck the moisture from the outside atmosphere back in and they'll become moist again. So uh, in our case, we use artificial uh, air or heat, heat air, heated air, where we bring the product from the processing area uh, into our drying rooms. And, uh, and as you can see here, the, the, the product is stacked and we're using fans to tumble hot air around our room in order to dry it. Now this product here uh, was cooked uh, about 24 hours ago and you can already see uh, more salt starting to come out of the animal and it's important to keep the salt off the animal so maybe day two or day three of being in this room here we'll bring that back out. Uh, rewash it, possibly recook it. Uh, they're all decisions we make uh, as we start to see the product uh, start to go through its drying phases. Um, the different species will do it uh, in different ways in terms of the salt coming out. And also the, the, the period and, and length of time that the product has been salted will also mean it'll take longer to get the salt out of the animal. So typically we would handle product like this anywhere at three to four times. Uh, through cooking, drying, washing, cooking, drying, washing. That, that process is done multiple times in order to get it to a finished product. All right, after we've, um, we've been through the various stages of, um, of processing the product, uh, we end up with a final product. And, and you know, here's some examples of a product that is sufficiently tried and of a, and a good enough quality uh, to be sent to the final market. So as you can see, this is a prickly redfish. Uh, the size of the animal um, in terms of its dried state is generally directly relational to how big the animal was when it was caught. As you can see, there's a significant uh, size difference in the animal once it's finished its final drying process. Things to look at for good dried product is, is that it's firm, it's not soft to touch, it's not, in the case of the prickly reds, it's not bendable. Um, and also that there's not salt coming from the animal, so I can't visibly see any salt on the outside of the animal. And that generally holds for assessing the quality of dried product on, on all species. Other things to look for uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the product, I mean this is blackfish here. You can tap the product together. It sounds, it sounds dry, it has a dry sound to it. I can't physically bend the product and, and the more dry the product is, obviously, um, obviously the more stable the product is. If the product's still moist and wet, uh, it can still break down and go rotten over a period of time. So it's very important to get the drying of the product correct. From here, the product would be um, uh, graded out into, uh, into its various sizes again and, uh, and bagged up and then sent to the market um, uh, and in, and, and in a, 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 like a sugar bag style uh, packaging generally. And, uh, and that's the end of the process for us as a, a processor. Hopefully, this video was useful to you. If you'd like to learn more, you can access the Torres Strait Bechtemer Species ID Guide in PDF form on this DVD. 
To do so, you need to put the DVD in a computer disk drive, not in a DVD player. The computer may start playing the DVD automatically. If so, close the DVD software. Instead, go to My Computer on Windows or Finder on a Mac. Find the icon for the DVD and click on it. Then click on the PDF file displayed and the guide will appear.